today i have prepared a small lecture on how this load on the slab which is applied on a two way and a one way slab is transferred to its beams uh, which is a very fundamental problem that uh, a civil engineer or you can say a structural engineer faces in his day to day life right now this fem uh, because of these fem uh, you can say finite element methods uh, it is very easy to obtain this kind of uh, loads on the beams but uh, when we want to cross check our models of uh, finite element method uh, by hand calculation we should know what are the approximate methods uh, through which we can get a rough idea of um, loads that should come on the beam from the slabs so let's start our lecture today uh, this uh, uh, in the civil engineering buildings made up of reinforced cement concrete rcc three major components of the structures are slab beams and columns in the ascending of their strength so this uh, in this uh, lecture general what we are going to do let's have a brief idea of it see we have a building okay let's uh, draw a 3d more 3d uh, diagram just to understand better okay now uh, this uh, we have this uh, layout of beams and columns these vertical lines are columns and these uh, horizontal lines they are beams and uh, we have a slab like this which is supported on these beams so this uh, slab is all uh, it is the present uh, almost everywhere wherever there is a beams a set of beams in the plan so we design these slabs for some vertical loads and some horizontal loads um, horizontal means uh, they we are talking about this wall but in this problem we are discussing only the uh, uniformly distributed load that come uh, come on the slab so this is a vertical load in this case so uh, here we have the slab which is uh, uh, loaded by some uh, load intensity say w not and this uh, load is uh, being uh, transferred to the surrounding beams okay these beams will take this um, load to these columns these columns uh, columns uh, they also take the load from beams on other floors like say this floor here we have this floor so this uh, slab will distribute beams uh, load to these beams and then to these columns so this uh, load comes from all the columns all the way down to the foundation depending on the type of the soil how strong is your soil what is the bearing capacity of the soil you design uh, the type of the foundation it can be a raft it can be a uh, footing it can be a strip footing it can be a pile foundation whatever it is it depends upon the soil the slab is transferred to the beams and loads of the beams are transferred to the column this is what we have discussed the columns transfer these loads to the foundation of the building then based on the dimensions of the foundation and bearing capacity of the soil these loads are transferred to the soil beneath the structure while keeping a check on the strength and serviceability criteria means when we are designing the structure we should make always have in mind the serviceability limits like the deflections uh, they should not cross the permissible limits as given by our IRC, uh, IS standard IS 456 and uh, the design criteria is also given in IS 13920 which is a uh, tactile detailing code uh, which is required for seismic qualification of the building and uh, these are uh, this uh, will tell us the serviceability criteria and the strength criteria and this gives a strength criteria in case of uh, seismic loads so this all we check while designing a structure so um, today we will see how this uh, area loads applied on the slab are transferred to the beam as line load in one way and two way slab systems so let's uh, start our uh, discussion we have a figure one we have a figure two so we start this um, case case one is uh, when l dash upon l is greater than two this this length of one width of the beam uh, slab is more than two then uh, we call this slab as a one way slab and when this uh, length upon width of the slab is less than two we call the slab as a two way slab in one way slab uh, the load of the slab uh, which is in w which is w not kiloton per meter square see this load is in per meter square so this is important is shared by only two uh, long beams of the slab shorter sides this uh, line is uh, shorter, shorter sides uh, along the width of the slab are assumed not to share the load of the slab this uh, a statement is saying that the uh, the load of the slab which is pqrs is uh, being shared half of this that is pql uh, sorry pqa dash a this load 
this load is taken by the uh, beam PQ this PQ will take this total area of the load similarly this uh, L A A dash R S this load is taken by the R S beam in this direction like this so this is a 50-50 of the load has been shared by these two long beams there is no beam uh, load distribution towards Q R and P S beams so for the slab PQRS in figure 1, the load is transferred on the beams PQ and S are equally and the magnitude of the load is load, the load is transferred on the beam PQ and S are, S are equally and the magnitude of the load is W0 into area upon 2 that is W0 is the total load per unit square so this per uh, unit means this area we need to multiply to get the total load and when we ob obtain this total area into W0 we need to make it half so this is by 2 so this is the total load that is been taken by this load P uh, lo uh, beam PQ now let's come to the figure 2 figure 2 is a two way slab here we will see L dash upon L is less than 2 L dash upon L is less than 2 here the slab acts as a two way slab in two way slab the load shared by all the four beams as shown by the yield line pattern in figure 2 uh, here we will see uh, which beam will carry uh, what kind of load and what is the area of the load so let's see now uh, this beam pq pq p dash q dash this is taking this load p dash q dash b dash p this is the trapezoidal pattern so we have written here p trapezoidal load is taken by this beam uh, this uh, beam q dash and r dash q dash and r dash is taken q dash b dash and r dash q dash uh, b dash and r dash similarly we have written all the uh, type of loads and the area so we can see this uh, these shorter beams they are taking the triangular load and these uh, longer beams they are taking the uh, trapezoidal type of load Normally if we cal uh, calculate load from the slab to the beam, if W0 is the UDL, uniformly distributed load in kilonewton per meter square, then total load uh, of the triangle is C. You, now here we are on the uh, smaller beam, this beam. Uh, let's obtain the area of this triangle. This uh, triangular area is L is the length, this uh, height from this point to this point. This is L by 2. See, this is L by 2. So, half into L into L by 2 into W0, which is the load intensity. So, this is giving us total area. So, area into uh, UDL, that is half into L into L by 2 into W0. This is W0 into L uh, square by 4. So, this is has to be superscript, which is uh, not uh, seen here. So, this is like this. So, it's a... Uh, drag this figure a little down so that we can understand it better so here we have area um, half into l into l by 2 half into l into l by 2 this is coming w round into l square by 4 this is the total uh, load that is coming on this beam p dash and s dash which is w um, not into l square by 4 on P dash S dash so the UDL of the beam is total load upon length of the beam so this is load this load is acting this area load is acting on this P dash S dash now we need to see what is the load per unit length so to obtain this into per unit length we need to further divide it by L which is the length of this beam so this load becomes W naught into L by 4 kilo Newton per meter now see this unit this is only kilo newton per meters and this w naught that we started with this was in kilo newton per meter square so here we have converted this area load to the line load uh, here we have seen this and w naught into l by uh, 4 kilo newton per meter but it is not the correct approach why because you see this uh, simply what we have done is uh, we have obtained this uh, total load and divided by length this is not right because this load intensity this is variable this is not a, UV, a udl type of load this is a uvl 
uniformly varying load it is zero here it is maximum here then it, it is um, again maximum here and the zero here so this um, uh, to obtain the util of the on this beam we need to see uh, the what is the maximum moment uh, because of this uh, uvl load at the center of the beam then we will equate this maximum moment to an imaginary beam which will have a, a uv a similar moment uh, but because of the udl so when we liquid these two uh, moments we will get the uh, corresponding load intensity on this imaginary beam and that is the load intensity that we require so what we are saying here is this yeah, the load from the slab coming on the beam is triangular in nature which is uniformly variable along the length of the beam it has highest intensity at the center and least at the ends this effect has to be taken into consideration while calculating equivalent UVL on the beam. UDL on the beam. So steps to obtain equivalent UDL on the beam from triangular load. So refer figure 3. First let us obtain the support reaction RA which is equal to RB. Uh, let's obtain the support reaction from this triangular load. We have this. Uh, let's uh, move this bit, uh, little bit, figure a little bit up there. This one. This also. Okay. So we have this RA is equal to half. Now this RA is a half of this total area. Half of the area, half into base into height, and which is equal to L by four. Okay. Now we will see that um, this RA is W dot L by four. Now calculating moment at the middle span of the beam due to triangle loading in figure 3. So we want to obtain this, uh, what is the moment at this, about this axis. What is the moment about this axis towards the left of the span. And uh, towards the left we see this M to the left of the section. Uh, sum of the force into lever arm. So we have this uh, reaction which is acting like this. Uh, this is uh, bringing this clockwise moment and this uh, load on this uh, beam acting downward which is anti-clockwise so we subtract these two because of this we have this moment w naught into w naught uh, into l by 4 is the reaction into its lever arm which is l by 2 minus area of this half into l by 2 into w into lever arm is 1 by third of uh, the one, 1 by third of this height of the triangle so that is l by 6 it is 1 by 3 into L by 2. So we get this W0 into L square by 12. Now let us calculate the moment at the middle span to do the UDL shown in figure 4. This is the imaginary beam. And this is the required load intensity that we need. This is actually W, not W0. So here we have this, uh, we want to obtain this uh, moment here also, similar it's, uh, to the left of the span, we have this clockwise moment, this anti-clockwise moment, we will subtract both of them, W into L by 2 is the reaction into lever arm, minus W naught into L square by um, 8, so we get this, W L square by 8, this is the moment at the center of this UDL, so you remember this thing, this is U V L and this is U B L. Considering the equivalent UDL on the slab due to triangular load, we need to equate moment at the mid span of both the beams as discussed above. That's WL square. WL square by 8 is equal to W naught L square by 12. So we need to dis actually this has to be corrected. W naught L square by 12 has to be equal to W into L square by 8. So we get this W is equal to 2 by 3 W naught. So this is the slab load in uh, kilonewton per meter square. Now we need to convert when they uh, convert this uh, kilonewton per meter square to per meter because we want the uh, line load on the beam so that we can transfer this line load on to the columns so now we need to convert this load to the line load 
so UDL on the beam is a kilonewton in kilonewton per meter is equal to UDL on the beam in kilonewton per meter square into width of the load. So here we already know from this figure that this width of the load is n by 2. So we will multiply this UDL on the beam is W0 into L by 2. So W0 is W, w is uh, 2 into 2 by 3 into W0. So this is 2 by 3 W0 into L by 2 which gives us W0 into L by 3. So this is the final solution that we required. So what it is saying? It is saying that if we have a slab like this and it is uh, loaded by an intensity of W0 uh, and we want to see what is the load uh, uh, which is uh, if it is a two way slab. Okay, remember this thing. want to obtain the load uh, uh, uniformly distributed load that this beam shorter beam will take here to here here and here so this uh, load intensity that we can safely take is like this this is the yield line pattern so this load that is taken by this is a uniformly distributed load that i am talking about and this pattern this triangular is ud uvl so with this UTL that we can take is W into L by 3. This is in terms of kilonewton per meter. This was in kilonewton per meter square. So based on this, we can get the total load by multiplying it further by its length. And then total load by half will go to this column and this column. So further we can take uh, continuous calculations. So this is the relation. I hope you can uh, understand if there are any doubts please let me know in the comments this is my first uh, lecture so please forgive me if there is any uh, mistake I can see some corrections along the length of the chapters but uh, I will try to minimize these things in the future lectures thank you so much for being with us thank you